All right, so good afternoon, everybody. For those I've not met yet, I'm rolling batteries around the table. Um, I don't know where to stand. <laughs> I think we're allowed to go up to here. Here, there? Okay. Not the, not the X. Not the X. Not the X. All right, so um, for those who I've not, not met yet, my name's Graham. Um, <laughs> I do endpoint things at Airbnb. Um, I've been living in the US for about 18 months now, and I've discovered I have a minor obsession with American drug commercials. Um, they're all just really silly. Um, fun fact about me. Um, I'm joined by Wes, who does endpoint things at Square, and we spend too much time drinking together. Fact. All right, so crypt. WTF is crypt. Crypt is a tool for enforcing encryption on Mac OS devices and securely storing those secrets. Once those secrets are stored, there is an audit trail and an approval process to make sure you don't get an errant help desk person taking all of your firebolt keys. And as of the first beta of 10.14, uh, the current release of Crypt works just fine. So um, I'm happy to announce we have minus 109 days support, assuming that it gets released on 25th September as 10.13 did. Um, so Crypt started out a few years ago as a Python Objective-C app that, I, that ran on Mac OS 10, 10.7, and upwards. I stole CSFDE from Google's Cauliflower Vest, and we were away. Um, Crypt initially started out as an alternative to Cauliflower Vest that A, didn't rely on App Engine or using G Suite or any of Google's infrastructure, if that was a problem for you, um, and B, actually looks like a Mac OS app rather than some K-Tinker thing. Um, it was launched via a login hook that really are honestly definitely 100% deprecated by now. Um, even though they're still there, but anyway. Um, so the user had to log it, uh, type their password in twice to log into their Mac. Um, um, it's much fine. I oh, yeah, I have sound, sorry. Was it, was it, it did not work. Oh, no, it's this piece. Or is it this bit? Yeah, oh. it's over there. I'll have to go back. Please hold. <laughs> Let's go back. Can we redo that? Yeah, we can no? go back. Let's go back. <laughs> we have technology. Where's my mouse cursor? There we go. No, nope, full blast. It's fine. There we go. There we go. Right, okay. All right, we're going to skip. It's fine. We'll skip that because hey, it's, hi, it's not hot. going very well. Anyway, so much like that poor lady's atopic dermatitis, <laughs> it was fine. <laughs> Unlike the sound of my computer because I don't know how computers work. Um, the server the client S goes to hasn't really changed much over the years. Um, I like to think that's because I made it absolutely perfect the first time around. Um, when a client sends its various secrets, they get saved to an encrypted field in the database. So what has changed with Crypt Server over the last few years? So the biggest changes are allowing the request, um, blah, 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 allowing anyone with access to the server to approve requests if you want to. Um, of course, you can still just have one set group of people, like a set group of approvers who, to approve the key request if you choose to do so. Um, add in SAML support because it's basically impossible to use a modern app without it these days. And the biggest change in recent times is that recovery keys have nicer formatting. Thanks to whoever did that pull request. No, no cheer for pretty. No, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, Crypt 2 was basically a complete rewrite. I decided it'd be really cool to learn Swift. And after seeing Tom's, uh, Tom Bergen's talk about how you can write authorization plugins on, for macOS with Objective-C, I sort of slide up to him and said, hey, can we do this in Swift? Because that'd be cool. That'd be fun, right? He went, yeah, sure. Um, he then proceeded to teach me that I hate computers even more than I already thought I did. Um, because writing authorization plugins is incredibly painful. Um, you basically need to install every single version, every time you build it, into a VM, and then SSH into that, and tail syslog whilst logging in to see what crashes. Um, that's really fun. Um, but anyway, we sort of got it working in an afternoon. Um, so all of the good code is Tom's, and all the terrible code is mine. Um, so Crypt switched from being an app to that runs via a login hook to an auth plugin. Um, the, this, the advantage of this is that this is Apple's supported method of interacting with the user uh, login, which is as supported as anything Apple does. Um, we also get access to the user's credentials, so we can feed in the user, username and password straight into FDE setup to enable encryption without the user having to type in their password twice. Yeah. Woo! Thank you. Uh, so, who here has used Crypt 
since day one of Crypt, like one. Anybody? Is that Alistair? Yeah, yeah of course it is. Uh, so um, uh, I jumped on board uh, at Crypt2, and then uh, we decided that last year, uh, around this time, uh, with uh, APFS and stuff, that uh, we needed a new version to uh, account for all the changes. Uh, so let's see here. Um, uh, the biggest change with High Sierra was, of course, APFS. And uh, with that, uh, File Vault no longer requires a restart to enable. So we're like, okay, cool, we can take advantage of that. Uh, so now, uh, whenever Crypt goes to do the enablement, uh, it doesn't require a restart. It doesn't prompt you anymore. Just logs right in, you're good to go. Encryption starts in the background. Uh, but APFS also brought some not so great things. Uh, before we were able to rotate a recovery key if it was used. So if you used the recovery key to unlock the drive, uh, we could test and see that that was actually happening, and then we could rotate it. Broke on APFS. Thanks, Apple. <laughs> Still works on the HFS Plus, though. Yes. Ah. So, uh, and then also, uh, with uh, Encrypt2, like Graham said, you know, uh, you had to like tail the syslog whenever we wanted to test anything in the authorized plugin. Uh, with Crypt3, we added a bunch of changes, and so it was significantly hard to debug anything. So we uh, changed the logging format over to the new uh, OS log that uh, started shipping in 10.12. And uh, so now you can either stream logs live with uh, the log command, or you can view them later after enablement. Uh, and Joel was super kind enough to help us convert everything to Swift 3 and then eventually Swift 4. Thank you. Next week, Swift 5. Yeah, no, it's going to be great. I, I thought we were going to have to do it last night. but uh, and then, uh, But unfortunately, with all of these new changes, it only works on 10.12 and up. So I made the terrible mistake that Joel likes to make all the time, which is asking people, hey, what do you want to see in something? It's a terrible decision. You're just basically handing out free code, and it's awful. Uh, I made that decision uh, last year at the Penn State Hackathon, and I was like, hey, what would you want to see in like a new version of Crypt? Is there any changes? And the only way to do that, uh, well, the one thing that everybody wanted was customizations. I want to be able to do things here and do things there. Uh, so, uh, and the only way to do that is with preferences. Who doesn't love preferences? So, in Crypt 3, everybody got preferences. You got a preference, and you got a preference. <laughs> uh, so one request was to have uh, Crypt write the recovery key somewhere other than the default directory of our root. So of course, now you can customize that. Uh, and then other people wanted the ability to use an institutional key as well. I don't know why you would do that. But now, if you put uh, your file vault master keychain in library keychains, uh, it will automatically add it to the enablement process. It doesn't actually require a preference set. It just does it automatically. It's pretty cool. Um, but by default, uh, if you leave the key on the disk, Crypt will try and re-escrow that key uh, every hour. Uh, but now you can uh, customize that interval to whatever you want, or just don't send them up ever again. That's also an option, too. Preferences. Uh, and then on uh, 10.12.5, uh, Apple fixed a bug where you were uh, you were able to like if you validated a recovery key more than ninety some odd times, it would just start returning false, even though the key was actually working. Uh, Ten twelve five that got fixed. Thank you, because uh, you had everything to do with it. Uh, <laughs> um, so we added in the ability to validate the key, uh, and you can do it thousands of times, and it'll it'll work every time. Uh, and if the key uh, becomes invalid, uh, Crypt will just automatically delete it. So with that, we were able to set up like a little bit of an automated process where uh, you could just automatically generate new keys. So we like to do that with uh, Monkey. So Monkey will check uh, every single time it runs to see if the key is in place. Uh, if there isn't a key, it will prompt the user for a security update and uh, ask them to log out, and when they log back in, Crypt will notice that the key isn't there, and it'll just generate a new one for you automatically. You don't have to 
pop up these weird dialogues asking people to type in their passwords because that's just never a good idea. Don't prompt people for passwords. And so you've probably heard us talk about authorization plugins. Huh? Uh, if you really want to go a deep dive into it, Tom Bergen did a really good talk at Penn State two years ago. Three. Three years ago? Wow, was that long? I think. Uh, and then we also mentioned about this like check-in portion. So uh, let's talk a little bit about what they are and what they do. A little behind the scene action. So uh, the first one is the authorization plugin, which uh, sits at, uh, as you can see there, library security, security agent plugins, Crypt.bundle, bundle, and this is the Objective C Swift bit. Uh, and like Graham mentioned, it's like the official supported way uh, to interact with the user login. Uh, it runs after you enter your credentials, but before you can get to the desktop. So it's a little dangerous because if you mess it up, you just won't be able to log in. Period. It's happened in testing. Uh, but uh, the plugin here is what does all the heavy lifting. So uh, it enables File Vault if it needs to, and it generates and rotates recovery keys if needed. Uh, so the second major piece is the check-in script, uh, which is a lovely little Python script that sits at library crypt check-in. And the script runs on an interval uh, via launch daemon. Uh, and this is responsible for escrowing the recovery key to crypt server. Uh, if configured properly, it would also validate that recovery key, if it's still good. And as well, it'll check to see if the key was used to unlock the disk. So you're probably thinking, really, do I need crypt? I've got all this like file vault MDM kind of stuff. Uh, have you ever tried to move from one MDM that stores file vault to another? Anybody? It's yeah. fun, isn't it? How'd that go? It's great fun. What, what key? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So uh, luckily, yeah, yeah. luckily, you know, some MDM providers don't allow you to, like, just mass export recovery keys. Thank you for not letting us do that. Um, so uh, with Crypt, you can actually uh, very easily just migrate keys from one to another. So if the machine's rebooted, uh, it'll just generate a new key for you if you set it up properly. And then uh, you can easily ship it to wherever you want. It could be to Crypt Server if you wanted to. Uh, or if you wanted to move from one MDM to another, you could actually use Crypt to do that. Uh, in like three minutes, I was able to make a new key and send it to a test machine on Simple MDM. Uh, easy peasy. So, so. I'm sorry, you just triggered my uh, pedant to see that. Um, we're yep. not migrating keys. You're generating new ones shipping it up. Yeah. Sorry. Yep. Nope. <laughs> I thought I correct you all the time anyway, so I might as well do it here. Um, <laughs> all right, so <laughs> I enrolled this VM into an MDM, and it's not playing again. God, why didn't I use Keynote? Oh, I get my, where's my cursor? Come on. Where's oh, the play sorry, button? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Where is it? Play. Oh, I can do that. Demo oh, videos. Back. Nope, that's not it. Come on, computer. Oh, I want to use Keynote again. Oh, go. Go, go, great. Yeah, I can use computers. Go. All right, so I enrolled this VM into an MDM, and I told it I never want this device to be unencrypted. So I encrypt everything, all the things. So I set the number of deferrals to none. And I logged in, and I assumed it's going to be like crypt. So, right, well, crypt, this is all the user sees. Their machine's now encrypted. They're happy. That we're fine with them to go. So I cracked open terminal and um, had a look. Surely it's encrypting now, right? Because I said, just encrypt it. So who do FD set up status? I should type quicker. All right, so it's off. Oh, no, this is not good. But deferrals are off. deferred enablement. So I log out, and I get this very promising looking box. Um, for some reason, asked me for my password again. Don't know why I need to do that, but that's a great user experience. But I don't want to encrypt my stuff, so I click cancel. Why the hell can you click cancel on this box? <laughs> this is dumb. I said in MDM, I want this thing encrypted all the freaking time. No. All right, so this is a bug. Um, if deferral is set to none, the user can then say no forever. So they can never get encrypted. Um, so you go, fine, I'll set it to one. 
So then the user can log in with its unencrypted once. Go down, download your entire company source code, their disk is still un unencrypted one time until they log out. And um, who has users that log out all the time? Yeah, no. So it's great. And, come on, computer, seriously. Okay, so NDM can rotate keys, right? Um, so how does it work? At a really high level, the secret is shipped from the MDM server, and then this is used to rotate it. So this is either the password of a user that's authorized to unlock the disk, which is a great idea, um, or um, using a recovery key, which is obviously better. You know, it's not users didn't choose it themselves. It's not their cat's name. So young Brent is sitting down there in Cupertino, writing MDM key rotation. He's feeling pretty damn pleased with himself at this point. He's solved our problems. Generous God. Um, so MDM initiated rotation is absolutely flipping terrible. So first off, the secret needs to be shipped from the server to the client. This should never happen, ever. Your secret should never leave your server in an automated fashion. Um, there should be approvals and audit trails and all that kind of stuff. But let's pretend that's not a really stupid idea. Um, so you've got your secret and it needs to be sent down to the client. You can either send a uh, user's password of someone who's authorized to unlock the disk or the recovery key. So obviously we're going to be sending the recovery key because we don't store our user's passwords in plain text. Why would we? Um, that sounds really stupid. Um, but unfortunately it doesn't work um, on APFS anyway. And because we care about security, all of our devices are on 1013. And because we don't hate our users, we don't give them spinning disks. So all of our machines are, have APFS. Um, so that means you need to store your user's password in a reversible format and pray they don't change it. That sounds really secure to me. I'm glad we're bothering to encrypt in the first place. So, um, yeah, Apple thinks that's a great solution. Um, I don't. So um, this talk is called What's New with Crypt? And all we've done is talk about old stuff. So I guess we should talk about some new stuff. So um, APFS, another fun bit was it removed the ability to detect whether the disk was unlocked using a recovery key. Um, we waited for Apple to res restore it. We filed radars, bugs, Apple seeds, all the rest of it. And um, we're kind of done waiting now because it's still not there in 10.14. Um, the, in the next version of Crypt and Crypt Server, uh, we will add in the option to rotate keys once they've been viewed. Um, this is initiated by the server, just sets a boolean flag that the check-in script looks for. So we're never shipping secrets down to the, to the client. Um, so they're never shipped out, so a bad actor can't use that method to get your recovery keys out of your machine. Are you the machine? Server. That's better. Server. Yeah, <laughs> servers. Servers are good. Uh, so we also added in on the client side uh, the ability to uh, force generate a new key. So instead of just like having to wait for this like automated process to be set up, uh, you can now set a single preference. Yeah, more preferences. They're great, uh, especially for all the documentation. Uh, so the new preference of generate new key, uh, if it's set to true, uh, no matter what state the machine's in, when you log in, it'll generate a new key for you. Uh, and then it'll actually set that preference to false. So you just can't generate keys all over again. But uh, it will check to see if that preference is managed. Uh, if it is, it will just ignore it and not do it, because otherwise we just don't want you to make new keys. We're saving you from yourself. And back to Grant. All right, so I hear you all say, when can we all have these wondrous new features? When? When? Generous open source gods. Well, God. <laughs> Look at <this>. God. <laughs> Uh, welcome to our world. <laughs> um, <laughs> Matt, Matt um, how about now? Would you all Can like we do it now, Matt? Crypts? Can we do it now? Come on, Matt. Let's, let's con continue the tradition of releasing other people's software. Um, <laughs> I don't have to work out to get this out again. Oh, God. All right. Where do I stand? Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that's the we'll, worst part. We'll I don't know it. where to stand. Oh, I'm just going to go busy. over here. It's too busy. Let's get this. Okay, that's not any better. Is that better? That's better. All right, here we go. Here we go. Now I'm one of you. 
One of us, one of us. One of us. You can scroll down to that. Just natural scrolling. Oh, you can read it. Or? Oh, yeah, you want to read it? Oh, yeah, new in this version, all the stuff we just talked about. <laughs> yeah. Funny that. Is it time? It's Is it time. time. Let's do it. Let's count down. Five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. Huzzah! Tap to click. <laughs> <laughs> and the Wi-Fi kept me off. Hey! Hey! And now I have to try and work out how to get this Coming back. to auto package <laughs> servers near you. Present. Alright. So, um... In January, I was diagnosed with testicular cancer. Um, it's okay. I'm going to survive. I'm going to continue delivering terrible talks. Um, but... This, this room is full of people. I thought When I got it, I thought only old people got it. Turns out it's between 25 and 35 which is a hell of a lot of people in this room. It's me and Movember do some fantastic work. They help with prostate cancer, so people who are a bit older than 35, you know, they're helping you too. Um, they deal with mental health issues, uh, depression, suicide, that kind of stuff. And after what Tom said today, it's very, that's an important issue for all of us as well. Um, so in November, I'm going to be shaving off my beard and annoying my wife by having a moustache and looking stupid. Um, <laughs> Kind of like that guy right there. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Like, I don't even need to do it. It's pointless. Um, so if you could find your way to either hitting... The first one is US. It will charge you in US dollars. If that's not your preferred currency, uh, Facebook will eat the um, oh, what's it? currency conversion fees. Um, so you can donate in your own currency. Um, this will affect everyone here. Either you will get one of those problems or you'll know someone who's got it. All right. Um... TLDR. MDM firewall escrow is terrible. Crit's pretty awesome. <laughs> it's open source, so some intelligent people have contributed code and some not so intelligent people. Those who don't have the computers work. Yep. Um, Crit's pretty easy to set up, in my opinion, um, but I would say that because I wrote the instructions. Um, <laughs> um, don't wait for someone with a tablet telling you the obvious before you try something, because um, 